Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie and in today's episode I'm going to be making a automatic sensing soldering fume extractor. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So most of us know that uh, you should be using some sort of fume extractor when soldering. Um, but I'm sure lots of other people are a bit like me. And if you're just doing a quick job, it's really easy to not turn it on. Um, but then quite often the quick job turns into a longer job and you really should have turned it on, but it's too late then by the time you thought of it. So I'm going to see if I can make a basic fume extractor that will automatically sense when I start soldering and turn on. I think this would be really helpful and help me to avoid forgetting to turn it on. So let's get started. So there's several different types of fume extractor, but for home use, uh, I typically just go with the ones where it's a fan uh, that's sucking air through a carbon filter. It does for most jobs. So this is a recent one that I've printed. Um, I've also used the bought ones before. They all work in the same sort of way. There'll be a link there appearing of where this one um, the files came from. It's just got a 120 mil PC case fan and that variable speed control. I didn't even bother to put a normal like barrel jack power supply on it. Most of the time I'm soldering. I'm not using my power supply so it's just got plugs to go straight into my power supply for 12 volts and it's got this cartridge in it which takes a cut out piece of carbon filter so it works fairly well but like i said it's super easy to forget to turn it on so i'm going to make my own version which will hopefully detect when i start soldering the first thing i'm going to need is a fan so i've got a similar fan to that but instead of just a pc case fan this one is got uh, PWM speed control. It's 12 volts and it's got a fair amount of blow to it. So that should be sufficient for my fan. But then I want to suck it through something that will neutralize it. So I've got these carbon filters, which are usually used to replace the filter in the commercially available ones. But you can get them as a um, like refill pack of five. So I'm going to use one of those and then the bit that's going to change a bit from the basic is I've got this uh, 2.5 particulate sensor. So this uses a laser to measure the particles in the air that's being sucked through it by this small fan and output the level by serial. So I'm going to use that and put it into my favourite low cost microcontroller at the minute it seems, uh, a Raspberry Pi Pico to interpret the level from that and control the PWM to the fan. So now we've got all those parts, my first step is going to be to uh, wire up and test my sensor and test my fan speed control and then we can get building it. So the first couple things I want to test before I get started is that I can control the fan speed as I want to and that I can get sensible readings from the sensor. So the first one I'm going to check is the fan speed. So I've just wired up my Pico. I've got the fan PWM control connected in there and just to test it I'm using this slider potentiometer to uh, give the Pico a signal for what fan speed I want. So I'm using MicroPython for the Pico. So I've got my editor here and I'll just run that. And 
can see the slider, it's just printing out the fan speed. So at the minute the fan is off and if I turn it all the way up, it seems to have a bit of a delay um, starting on the fan. If it's got to completely stopped. So that's something I'm gonna bear in mind. There's the fan going full speed and I can turn it down. Now, if I don't turn it all the way off, I can start it again really quickly. But if I turn it all the way to stopped, it takes a while to get back up. Uh, I'm not quite sure on the theory of that. If you know, let me know on the Element 14 community. There's something processing it in there and it must just need something to kick it started, I'm guessing. So that's the fan speed all working. So now I'm going to test the sensor. So this is a uh, sensor test code. I'm actually uh, using the CircuitPython libraries. There's a really good Adafruit CircuitPython library available for a particular sensor. It works for this sensor from the looks of it. And there's instructions on the Adafruit website um, on how to use CircuitPython libraries with MicroPython. Uh, so I followed those steps. It involves copying uh, the library files you need. Um, so that's all straightforward. You can just follow those steps. So now it's running. We're getting the output for the 2.5 and 10 size particles. So my quick test, I'm going to grab my soldering iron and some solder, and I'm just going to burn some solder in front of the sensor. So it's currently measuring between three and four for 2.5. and it's gone up to 129, 229, 329. It's gone right up to a thousand and now it's actually stopped burning so much. So I think that's a really good test. I've picked up fumes coming off as I was burning the solder. Could see it went right up from single figures up to a thousand. It sort of stopped at exactly a thousand, which makes me think that might be the upper limit for detection. And now it's moved away and it's not burning anymore so much. Uh, I'm back down to three and four. So that gives me a good idea of the range that I'm looking at to kickstart the fan. It wasn't in my original plan, but I'm thinking sometimes you might be doing something where you want the extractor on because you're using a glue or something that might not be detected by the sensor. So I'm actually thinking I'm going to leave this potentiometer on there um, and have a manual override. So by default, it will be in automatic. But if you move the slider, then it could kickstart it to make it work at the defined level of extraction. So um, yeah, that was only for testing originally, but I think I'm going to keep it. it seems to add a nice useful feature. Uh, I'll just make sure that you can't override it to off. The other things I've learned is that this fan doesn't like starting up from stationary. I was going to have it off when I'm not using it, but it's actually a really efficient fan and super quiet. So I'm going to see what the lowest level I can keep it running at and just let it tick over at the lowest fan speed. So I'm going to wire all this up and then I'm going to code my actual software to process the sensor and output it into the fan speed. Uh, and then we can check it's all working. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? So for the case for this extractor, I've used FreeCAD for this design. So let's have a look at that. I've done it. So this is the left side. 
I've made it as a sort of rectangular box with a air entry and exit there. There's a groove to put the carbon filter, the fan and a little slot for a guard at the back. I've then got this space here for the particulate sensor. This will extrude here just enough for the holes in it there will just be sticking through. So hopefully that will get in the way of the airflow and just catch a small sample of the air. I've then put another little space for a bit of filter um, just because the airflow out of the sensor um, won't be filtered and I thought it wasn't hard to put that in and then all the air out the back will be filtered. I've got a slot in the front for the linear potentiometer. That will slide in there and then this space for the Pico and the electronics to go. I've then got the right hand side is a mirror of that base but then with some changes. So the air outlet from the sensor is only on one side so it doesn't have the exhaust path there but it's got a cutout for the wires to go through. I've got a hole for the DC input and a hole for the wires from the fan to go down to where the Pico will be to process the information and send the PWM signal back. I've then got a guard that I can slide in uh, to protect the filter. So the filter will be sandwiched by two guards so that it can't get sucked into the fan, which would damage it. And I've made a little slider to go on the potentiometer for controlling it. The file's all ready to send to the 3D printer, so I'm going to print those off and then we can have a look at it and assemble it all together. So I've got all my parts from the 3D printer. I've gone for a black and silver colour scheme. I did wonder if I should put some sort of mechanism that I could angle it but I think it will be fine for because I use a stand so the stand will be level with the center of the air intake aperture. These are the guards. So now let's have a look at assembling it all together. So I'm pretty much ready to assemble. Uh, a couple things I just wanted to cover. For the particulate sensor it's got this uh, little Molex connector. Now I ordered the housing and the crimps to match that. Um, I was a bit unsure if my universal crimp would do down to this size and my thoughts were correct. I couldn't manage to crimp these. So I went with a pre-assembled cable for it. Um, yeah, these are available direct from Molex. Uh, the link's in the bomb. The only downside is that it's all black, but I've just labelled which wire was which for the ones I wanted to connect. Um, but yeah, that's really good if you haven't got the crimp tool for the crimps you need. So I'm using that. Uh, and the last things before assembling my case, uh, I want to uh, screw it together to clamp the two halves. So in this side, I've got spaces for bolts to go. And this side, I've got these little holes. And in these, I can fit a heat cert threaded nut. So I'm just going to put four of those, one in each corner, and I just need to fix those in with a soldering iron. They're really good in 3D prints. You add a bit of heat and it will sort of melt its way in and then lock because of the marks on the outside. So that's my first job. And then we can start assembling. So now we're ready to go. I'm 
I'm going to plug it in and we can have a look at see it working. So I've got a 12 volt wall plug. The idea is I will leave this plugged into the extension lead that I use, uh, that I have the soldering iron connected to. And then when I turn that extension lead on that turns the soldering iron, the hot air rework station uh, and stuff on, this will come on automatically. So I've plugged it in. We've got the first five seconds of full blast and now it's gone whisper quiet. So I've got some wires here that I'm going to tin the ends of. So let's have a go. It's on auto mode. Now I could turn it on manual. Or take it down a bit. Or push it all the way across and it will be on automatic. So it starts off and it's in quiet mode and it's purring along nicely. As I start soldering, it winds its way up and then it comes down to a nice level. And then I finish my job and I've put it away and it's gone back to just ticking over nice and quietly. So I'm really pleased with that. It all works as I wanted it to. The manual override is a really great addition. Uh, it just means if I want some extraction uh, on demand, I can just flick it up. Uh, but it reacts when I started soldering, which was really good. It's a touch slower than I would have hoped it would be, uh, but that's all in the processing of the sensor. And it's not too bad. The tick over of the fan means that it's still extracting even before it's reacted. So it's uh, working really well. It's doing its job. I'm also really pleased with how nice it looks. It fits in really nicely on a desktop, uh, matches nicely in with the soldering iron. So I'm really pleased with that. It's gonna be something I use quite regularly. Would you use something like this? Are you gonna make one yourself? Um, let me know on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. If you're going to make any changes, adapt it for your needs, uh, let me know. I'd be really interested in how other people take this project and change it for their own use. But for now, that's all. So we'll see you next time.